On the 25th of January, 2011, the streets of Cairo were being ravaged by a rioting population, demanding the end of President Hosni Mubarak's 30-year regime. While the world was distracted by the dramatic scenes of chaos upon the streets above, deep within the ancient dusty tunnels, a team of archaeologists led by Suzanne Bickel of the University of Basel in Switzerland was quietly making one of the most significant discoveries of the past century. They had initially found the top of a large round stone at the eastern end of the Valley of the Kings. The archaeologists suspected that it was just the top of an abandoned shaft. But before they could investigate, due to Egypt's political process regarding finds within the valley, they had to cover the stone rim with their own locked iron door, inform the Egyptian authorities, and apply for an official permit to excavate. A year later, after gaining approval to excavate, Bickel returned with a team of two dozen people, including field director Elena Paula Goth of the University of Basel, Egyptian inspector Ali Rita, and local workmen. Each took turns lying on the ground, head pressed against the shaft wall, one arm through a small hole next to the capstone, snapping photographs. They left little doubt that it was indeed an ancient tomb. On top of the debris rested a dusty black coffin, carved from sycamore wood and decorated with large yellow hieroglyphs on its sides and top. Bickel has stated that she has never seen an Egyptian coffin in such a good condition before. The dating of fragments of pottery made from Nile silt and pieces of plaster, commonly used to seal tomb entrances in ancient times, together with the age of the other nearby sites, have indicated that the tomb could be more than 3,000 years old. The hieroglyphs describe the tomb's occupant as being named Nahimi's Bastet. Egyptologists currently believe she was a lady of the upper class and of Amun. People have been claiming there was nothing new left to find in the Valley of the Kings for almost as long as they have been digging there. The Venetian antiquarian Giovanni Belzoni believed he had emptied the last of the valley's tombs during his 1817 expedition, while Theodore Davis, who excavated there a century later, came to a similar conclusion right before Tutankhamun's burial chamber was found. Fortunately, there is a growing number of people who are beginning to suspect that there is a wealth of discoveries still left to be made in the Valley of the Kings, the Nile Delta, and Egyptian as a whole. And thanks to discoveries such as these, interest in these existing mysteries grows by the day. It is interesting to see that in this period, even a wealthy girl was buried with quite simple things, Bickel says. Comparing Nahim's Bastet's coffin and steel, with the elaborate pottery, furniture, and food found in earlier tombs. Her wooden coffin was certainly quite expensive, she says, but nonetheless, it lacked the elaborate inner coffins found in similar burials. Is this the burial chamber of an extremely ancient queen? After reinforcing the coffin and securing the mummy, Bickel's team have transported across the Nile to Luxor, where a full investigation is currently being undertaken into the true identity of the mystery female. With substantial insight into the controversial finds within ancient Egypt, we personally suspect that often the tombs, which appear the most crudely designed, containing wooden sarcophagus, are generally found to be the most ancient. Furthermore, their hieroglyphic writings were often far more exquisite in nature. Could this be the discovery of an original burial? and the crude hieroglyphic claim of the occupant's identity of fake? Hiding the Delta's true antiquity? A secret many fringe scientists have begun to believe is being protected by Egyptian antiquities. Many have come to suspect the Egyptians merely copied the original builders of the pyramids, after taking occupation of their structures many years later. Supportive evidence for these claims comes in many forms. Erosion upon the pyramids, and especially the Sphinx, including over 100 underground chambers we are currently researching, discovered under Giza in 1995 by a team led by Kent Weeks, which also show strong evidence of several flash flooding events involving seawater throughout their long existence. 
The lack of any written detail pertaining to the construction of either monument in any hieroglyphs found in ancient Egypt, and so on. We find it incredibly intriguing that more was not made public regarding this amazing find, which leads us to suspect it may be a highly important, albeit highly controversial, discovery. We will continue to do research on Nahem's Bastet and will endeavor to keep you all informed regarding any notable findings. Continuing on from our previous video where Don discusses the amazing and incredibly intricate artistic wonder that is the Kailash Temple, we felt it a good time to cover another incredible ancient wonder, and indeed set of rock-cut temples known as Madan Saleh. Predictably, a little shared enigmatic site, it is located within modern-day Saudi Arabia. Purportedly dating from the Nabataean Kingdom, 1st century AD, it is the southernmost settlement after the better-known, yet no less impressive Petra, made famous by the Indiana Jones epics. In 2008, UNESCO proclaimed Madan Saleh a site of patrimony, becoming Saudi Arabia's first World Heritage Site. 131 rock-cut monumental structures said to have been built as tombs. However, as they were cut with such precision, their existence is clearly a mysterious one. Very little is known regarding the ancient builders of these sites. The little we do know was left on several mysterious and invaluable plaques which adorn a select few of these rock-cut structures. Although the insides of the tombs appear to have been rather crudely finished, the outer exteriors are clearly phenomenally refined. For a civilization even a mere 2,000 years ago to have managed to create such precise structures remains a tough thing for mainstream archaeology to explain. Just like the many other sites, Pumapunka, Giza, etc., etc., they display a far superior level of ability to that of which we are led to believe. And as always, mystery history presumes it is not the historic record which is incorrect, but rather the antiquity of these structures which is actually being hidden, their true age concealed and attributed to a post-cataclysmic civilization rather than their true creator. The Nabataeans, the academically claimed builders, were quite advanced for their chronological position within history regardless, supposedly having a strongly democratic society, sharing wealth and land equally amongst the tribe. They also displayed an incredibly complex understanding of hydraulic systems. The name Mada and Saleh, or the city of Salih, is also interestingly associated with a very ancient prophet, which is also connected to an ancient tribe known as the tribe of Tamud. Saleh is also the equivalent to a very ancient figure mentioned within the Hebrew Bible. The tribe of Tamud said to be the descendants of the biblical Noah. However, the Tamud were also said to have become very corrupt, materialistic, and stopped believing in God. According to the accounts, this is when God sent prophet Saleh to warn them that if they would continue in that way, they would be destroyed, a prophecy which eventually came true. To this day, the remains of the ancient sites are considered by some to be cursed. What do you think regarding the rock-cut tombs of Mada and Saleh? Remnants left by a culture some 2,000 years ago with the use of copper and stone tools? Or structures left by a far more advanced, far more capable ancient people, whose entire existence is attributed to others, subsequently concealing it, here upon our planet? Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. In 1879, British archaeologist Wayneman Dixon successfully retrieved a number of mysterious artifacts from within the infamous lower northern shaft of the Great Pyramid of Khufu. One of these artifacts was a small piece of a square wooden rod which has since disappeared, the only artifact to conveniently go missing and the only artifact which could have produced an accurate dating for what seems was a rather elaborate prior attempt to overcome a sophisticated array of blocking stones and vertical passageways which confront all who try to breach the innermost sanctums of this mysterious pyramid. The reason for this past mission, or indeed who undertook such an attempt, remain a mystery, but their motive will soon become clear. One of Wayneman's other finds, resembling a small grappling hook with two rivets, matches two holes in a square rod still lodged up in the vertical northern shaft, clearly left by these wannabe tomb raiders.
it seems that these highly talented, acrobatic grave robbers couldn't make it any further. And once one becomes aware of the existence of a large hidden chamber built into the pyramid's design, placed just above this unexplored shaft, you will inevitably begin to wonder what could possibly be hiding up there. Indeed, it's a well-known fact that the builders of these structures were notorious for their superhuman efforts in concealment. Huge multi-ton blocking stones in front of the entrances to their kings and treasures, and indeed in front of virtually every interior shaft and room within the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The upper region of this northern shaft constitutes the last remaining unexplored areas due to the impossible access angle. We know it's there, and all we have to do is apply existing technology in getting in there, Rudolf Gattenbrink told the press. It must be noted, although the mention of tombs has been made, the evidence to suggest such is based solely upon a number of parchments and a single mark found within an interior chamber of the pyramid naming a gang and the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu. Egyptologists have taken these fragmentary factors and concluded that all pyramids were therefore built as tombs, the Great One being built over a 10 to 20 year period, concluding around 2560 BC. It seems the entire thesis of ancient Egyptian legacy is built around a few mentions of the pyramids as tombs. No mummies or burial artifacts except a tiny box claimed to be that of the sarcophagus of Khufu has ever been found in the pyramids. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, Khufu's Egyptian civilization, along with all subsequent and prior dynasties, catalogued tremendous details regarding their existence, yet all, for some reason, seemingly forget to mention the construction of the biggest, most mysterious structures on Earth or indeed how they did it. What could there possibly be hidden within this chamber? This unexplored and clearly sought after secret room, a room which is seemingly unrobbable. With mainstream Egyptologists, archaeologists and academic historians alike insisting that these amazing pyramids were once unquestionably tombs which were robbed completely over the millennia. Whatever this room contains, may settle this once and for all. During our extensive research into the Neolithic Age, explorations into the countless Stone Age ruins, which can be found all over the world, a hypothesis began to form regarding their past possible identity. However, evidence continues to mount suggesting that this was incorrect. Stone Age ruins like that of Stonehenge are all part of an existing legacy of a civilization which, according to mainstream paradigm, lived over 10 millennia ago. A people who displayed incredible capabilities, not only in the quarrying, moving, and eventual placement of many stones in excess of 100 tons. The incredible displays of earthworking, mounds and barrows formed from thousands of tons of earth, all of which was once laid atop these underground layers. All of these remarkable features are indicative of a group who were once bestowed with tremendous capabilities. Research provided by various specialist fields, alignments displaying a past, intimate knowledge of solar processions, so complex, we have only very recently been able to fully understand just how astonishing their accuracy was. For Avebury within the UK holds Neolithic lunar alignments, found to be precise down to the fifth decimal. MH felt that due to the seemingly primitive nature of many Neolithic stone buildings that, although this ancient people clearly displayed incredible abilities, their structures on the surface, however, also appear not as advanced as many other enigmatic ancient builders. Due to this, we presented a thesis that the Neolithic people were a surviving fragments of a once far more capable yet now lost civilization. We theorized that these groups, scattered across the earth, still possessed the knowledge to move said stones, yet had lost advanced technology. We have instead unearthed fitting historical details to support another, more intriguing theory. We found that many Neolithic sites, clearly constructed over extended periods of time, share uncanny similarities in their constructions to other ruins located on other continents, even displaying a somewhat deliberate, intended use of rough, uncarved stones. And the Great Salbic Kurgan is no exception. An enormous Neolithic barrow found within modern-day Siberia, 
although locally known as a Kurgan, this barrow, just like that of the Flintstone-esque dolmens also found across the world, is virtually identical to New Grange, a winter solstice-aligned barrow we have previously discussed in several videos. Thus, with this mounting, collaborative evidence, MH's hypothesis of Neoliths, having once been surviving groups of a post-cataclysmic world, has all but been proven wrong, and they were instead the work of a once flourishing, globe-trotting civilization. It would appear that these ancient monuments were built by a once prospering, worldwide society, and just like that of the pyramids of Giza, ancient Peru, Lebanon, China, along with countless others, were all constructed by past world-conquering superpowers, who fortunately left their proverbial fingerprints all over their particular sites, with the so-claimed Neolithic Age now found to be no exception to this rule. Who were the Neoliths? How are we supposed to believe the claim that these astonishing structures were somehow created by people wielding nothing but flints? and whom never made contact. How did this group align their monuments so accurately? And perhaps most important of all, what were these structures' original purposes? It is imperative that we continue to unravel that which has been successfully withheld from us for too long. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling. Sardinia is undoubtedly one of the most overlooked areas of ancient interest to be found anywhere in the world. Located within the Mediterranean, it's a large Italian island with 2,000 kilometers of coastline, dotted with sandy beaches. The interior, however, contains some of the most heavily concentrated ancient ruins to be found anywhere. Thousands of structures, known as naragis, litter the island. Stone structures masterfully shaped like beehives, often with domed roofs, that from inside reveal the mastery of the original constructors, with the largest and oldest of which, known as Sunuragi in Barumini. The Nuragi is a unique feature of the island of Sardinia that, according to mainstream academia, were constructed during the Nuragic Age, between 1900 and 730 BC. However, the Naraji is not the only compelling ancient ruin to be found upon the island, that regardless of the mundane academic explanation for their origins, are indicative of an enigmatic, highly capable, lost group of ancient beings, locally said to have been of tremendous size. Known as the Giant's Graves, or Tumba de Gigantes locally, the legends that can be found still circulating within the local population tell of giants having once been responsible for these structures, with the graves supporting such claims due to their enormous scale. However, predictably, academics argue that the size of these tombs were merely due to them being mass graves, although any remains from these supposed neurogic inhabitants dated to the Bronze Age remain elusive. Additionally, many of these giant graves, which number around 800, are constructed using enormous megalithic stones many tons in weight. This use of enormous stones is strangely absent from the 2,000 or so naraji that are instead constructed from more manageably sized stones. However, interestingly, legends in other areas of the Med, such as the Navita Destudomes found in Menorca, also built with manageable stones, shares these legends of giants having once been responsible a structure built for human habitation by supposed giants using similarly sized stones as the Naraja. Gantia, found on yet another Mediterranean island called Gozo, shares these same local legends of giant builders. Is it mere coincidence that all of these ancient ruins are found within the same global vicinity as each other? An extremely ancient ritual, still practiced within Sardinia, predating Christianity by a considerable time, could hold clues to the construction of these giants' graves. A carnival so old, the story behind its purpose has been lost throughout the ages. Depicting monsters of giant proportions, often covered in cowbells and adorned with horns or goat's heads, these monsters march through the local town. 
controlled as they go by human-looking counterparts, named the Isohadores, known as the Carnival of the Mamuthonas. What exactly the Mamuthonas are, or indeed possibly were, is also lost to history. Although these beasts, who grunt and stomp through the town center, are tethered and controlled by the Isohadores as they go. Were these mysterious beasts once a real creature? Were they utilized for their strength and size by these Isohadores to build the inexplicable structures still found within Sardinia? Are these widespread yet openly shared local legends passed down from generation to generation pertaining to giants having once been responsible for Sardinia's intriguing ruins a true story? With the visually stunning ancient ritual still preserved by the Sardinians, clues to the origins of the giants' graves and indeed the Nuragis? We find the spectacle practiced by the Sardinians, along with their local legends surrounding the giants' graves, highly compelling. The archaeological site of Assos located in the southwestern part of the Biga Peninsula. The location of the Assos settlement is unique in its exquisite and once highly complex design. An effortless mingling with that of the natural environment combined with the foundation of the architecture. It is also home of the world's most peculiar burial tombs, now known commonly as the meat eaters. They are notoriously known throughout the region for their unique ability of being able to dissolve the remains of the locals in surprisingly short periods of time. The meat-eater tombs are clearly ancient, yet their true antiquity is still unknown. They were originally cut to rough designs, with their interior and detailed decorations completed in the graveyard. Some long-term investigative researchers at the site are fascinated with this phenomenon and have been eagerly trying to figure out just what's causing the bodies to decompose so quickly in these particular tombs. The current favorite theory is that of a high content of aluminum within the stone used, some claiming that the aluminum material is what's causing the fast decomposition. Maybe the locals of Assos somehow figured out that aluminum could corrode flesh if added in specific quantities to the stone subsequently putting this material inside the tombs to decompose the bodies within a short period of time. The meat-eater tombs of Assos become more famous every day, as more and more specialists become aware of their fascinating and unique characteristics. Professor Nuritan Aslan, head of the archaeology department, thus head of the excavations in the ancient city, told us, quote, The fact that these tombs were exported to different countries shows that they were very expensive and highly sought-after tombs. Just how do the meat-eater tombs work? Regardless of the currently peddled theories, we still do not know. They remain an enigma to science and a mystery to history. During our extensive research into the Neolithic Age, explorations into the countless Stone Age ruins, which can be found all over the world, a hypothesis began to form regarding their past possible identity. However, evidence continues to mount suggesting that this was incorrect. Stone Age ruins like that of Stonehenge are all part of an existing legacy of a civilization which, according to mainstream paradigm, lived over 10 millennia ago. A people who displayed incredible capabilities, not only in the quarrying, moving, and eventual placement of many stones in excess of 100 tons. The incredible displays of earthworking, mounds and barrows formed from thousands of tons of earth, all of which was once laid atop these underground layers. All of these remarkable features are indicative of a group who were once bestowed with tremendous capabilities. Research provided by various specialist fields, alignments displaying a past, intimate knowledge of solar processions, so complex, we have only very recently been able to fully understand just how astonishing their accuracy was. For Avebury within the UK holds Neolithic lunar alignments, found to be precise down to the fifth decimal. MH felt that due to the seemingly primitive nature of many Neolithic stone buildings that, although this ancient people clearly displayed incredible abilities, their structures on the surface, however, also appear not as advanced as many other enigmatic ancient builders. 
Due to this, we presented a thesis that the Neolithic people were a surviving fragments of a once far more capable yet now lost civilization. We theorized that these groups, scattered across the earth, still possessed the knowledge to move said stones yet had lost advanced technology. We have instead unearthed fitting historical details to support another, more intriguing theory. We found that many Neolithic sites, clearly constructed over extended periods of time, share uncanny similarities in their constructions to other ruins located on other continents, even displaying a somewhat deliberate, intended use of rough, uncarved stones. And the Great Salbic Kurgan is no exception an enormous Neolithic barrow found within modern-day Siberia. Although locally known as a Kurgan, this barrow, just like that of the Flintstone-esque dolmens, also found across the world, is virtually identical to New Grange, a winter solstice-aligned barrow we have previously discussed in several videos. Thus, with this mounting, collaborative evidence, MH's hypothesis of Neoliths, having once been surviving groups of a post-cataclysmic world, has all but been proven wrong and they were instead the work of a once flourishing, globe-trotting civilization. It would appear that these ancient monuments were built by a once prospering, worldwide society, and just like that of the pyramids of Giza, ancient Peru, Lebanon, China, along with countless others, were all constructed by past world-conquering superpowers, who fortunately left their proverbial fingerprints all over their particular sites, with the so-claimed Neolithic Age now found to be no exception to this rule. Who were the Neoliths? How are we supposed to believe the claim that these astonishing structures were somehow created by people wielding nothing but flints? and whom never made contact. How did this group align their monuments so accurately? And perhaps most important of all, what were these structures' original purposes? It is imperative that we continue to unravel that which has been successfully withheld from us for too long. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling. During our extensive research into the Neolithic Age, explorations into the countless Stone Age ruins, which can be found all over the world, a hypothesis began to form regarding their past possible identity. However, evidence continues to mount suggesting that this was incorrect. Stone Age ruins like that of Stonehenge are all part of an existing legacy of a civilization which, according to mainstream paradigm, lived over 10 millennia ago. A people who displayed incredible capabilities, not only in the quarrying, moving, and eventual placement of many stones in excess of 100 tons. The incredible displays of earthworking, mounds and barrows formed from thousands of tons of earth, all of which was once laid atop these underground layers. All of these remarkable features are indicative of a group who were once bestowed with tremendous capabilities. Research provided by various specialist fields, alignments displaying a past, intimate knowledge of solar processions, so complex, we have only very recently been able to fully understand just how astonishing their accuracy was. For Avebury within the UK holds Neolithic lunar alignments, found to be precise down to the fifth decimal. MH felt that due to the seemingly primitive nature of many Neolithic stone buildings that, although this ancient people clearly displayed incredible abilities, their structures on the surface, however, also appear not as advanced as many other enigmatic ancient builders. Due to this, we presented a thesis that the Neolithic people were a surviving fragments of a once far more capable yet now lost civilization. We theorized that these groups, scattered across the earth, still possessed the knowledge to move said stones, yet had lost advanced technology. We have instead unearthed fitting historical details to support another, more intriguing theory. We found that many Neolithic sites, clearly constructed over extended periods of time, share uncanny similarities in their constructions to other ruins located on other continents, even displaying a somewhat deliberate, intended use of rough, uncarved stones. And the Great Salbic Kurgan is no exception. An enormous Neolithic barrow found within modern-day Siberia, although locally known as a Kurgan, this barrow, just like that of the Flintstone-esque dolmens, also found across the world, is virtually identical to New Grange, 
a winter solstice to Lion Barrow we have previously discussed in several videos. Thus, with this mounting, collaborative evidence, MH's hypothesis of Neoliths, having once been surviving groups of a post-cataclysmic world, has all but been proven wrong, and they were instead the work of a once flourishing, globe-trotting civilization. It would appear that these ancient monuments were built by a once prospering, worldwide society, and just like that of the pyramids of Giza, ancient Peru, Lebanon, China, along with countless others, were all constructed by past world-conquering superpowers, who fortunately left their proverbial fingerprints all over their particular sites, with the so-claimed Neolithic Age now found to be no exception to this rule. Who were the Neoliths? How are we supposed to believe the claim that these astonishing structures were somehow created by people wielding nothing but flints? and whom never made contact. How did this group align their monuments so accurately? And perhaps most important of all, what were these structures original purposes? It is imperative that we continue to unravel that which has been successfully withheld from us for too long. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling.